Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to a word from the Lord. James over here with you, and so glad you are invited or have allowed us into your homes as always. Now we have a special program on Mr. Marty Robert from the uh, Calvary Apostolic Church in Mayadan is going to be with me, with me tonight, and we're going to be discussing uh, a Bible subject of baptismal formula, and uh, we're going to let him. Uh, have his uh, a speech in just a moment. We always want to give you our contact information so that you can reach us and and with your questions, comments via email, regular mail, or phone. We want to be accessible to you, and so we allow that to uh, to happen. We hope that you will take advantage of that. I want to remind you quickly of our uh, uh, sister congregations that have other Bible programs like this with a live call in format where you can call in and ask Bible mm-hmm. questions. What does the Bible say Sunday night at 9 p.m. on this station? For those of you in Martinsville, Henry County, up in Virginia, you can uh, watch cable channel 18 on Wednesday nights at 9 p.m. You'll notice there is no longer a Sunday night program, but uh, that is soon to change. You're going to be able to watch uh, an- uh, the, uh, the, the program from uh, airing out of Martinsville on, uh, uh, I believe, uh, what, Thursday nights or another night uh, here on this station. So be looking for, be looking for that. So uh, we are excited about that because we're ever increasing. We're doing, we're doing bigger and better things. And so we, we hope that you uh, appreciate our efforts in that regard. Tonight, just by way of format, before we get started, uh, I want to uh, let you know this is what we'll be doing, our, our format, so to speak. We'll, Marty and I will split time for the first hour, and we'll have uh, three 10-minute speeches each, and that will take up the first hour. We'll just take turns, and then after that, we're going to have 20 minutes. The next 20 minutes is going to be question and answers, where we'll take turns uh, asking each other questions back and forth in order to uh, uh, reason together, you know, meaning of the mind, so to speak, so that you can uh, better understand, maybe clarify some, uh, uh, some of our uh, points that we're trying to make. The next 25 minutes will be your phone calls. We'll, let, we'll open the phone lines, and you can call in. And ask your questions, and we want to uh, again say, with your questions, please uh, get right to the point uh, and just ask your question. Let's be courteous and kind, and uh, uh, with a with a desire to know the truth, let's ask those questions, and then uh, we'll try to move along so we get as many people as possible to call uh, to uh, uh, ask their questions. And then, uh, as time permits, we have about six minutes left. It may be more or less, but uh, we'll say six minutes each closing. Uh, Marty can state his, have six more minutes to maybe recap or, or uh, reiterate anything he wants to say about uh, uh, his position that he's been talking about tonight, and then I will follow suit and, and close out the program. So uh, we're going to begin uh, our first of, of 10 minute speeches, and so uh, uh, Marty, uh, thanks for being here, and have glad, at it. Glad to be here. Step over this way a little bit. Okay. Can everybody see me now? Yeah. There you go. Okay, this is Pastor Marty Robertson, Truth Calvary Apostolic Church in Maynard, North Carolina. My appeal tonight is not new evidence or thought or theory, but rather back to the Bible uh, as the only source that we can rely on. I'm fully aware that this is not a subject to discuss lightly or irreverently because baptism was inaugurated by our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, I therefore give these scriptures in the fear of God, knowing that I must give account to God not only for myself, but to those that hear me today. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16 says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, instruction in righteousness. And uh, it means that we all the scripture in the Bible is given by inspiration. St. John chapter 12, verse 48, Jesus said, He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judges him the word that I have spoken in the last day. First Peter chapter two, uh, 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 20 says, Knowing this first, that no prophecy is of the Scriptures of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. The Word of God, some people say, well, that's your interpretation, and that's my opinion, or my interpretation. you got your interpretation, I've got mine. But Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 20 tells us that there's no prophecy of the Scripture of any private interpretation. The prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved 
by the Holy Ghost. The same Spirit that moved them to write uh, the Scriptures is the same Spirit it takes to understand the Scriptures. It was given by inspiration of God. The Word of God is not a man's private interpretation or opinion. Men were, wrote as they were moved upon by the Holy Ghost. It takes the same Holy Ghost to interpret what has been written. The reason why there's so many different denominations today is because the will of man has got involved in the flesh and carnality. And today to make it socially acceptable that we see that the will of the flesh has got in there. Revelation chapter 22 verse 18 says, For I testify unto everyone that heareth the words of the prophecies of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life. If we should take away any of the words, uh, take away from the words of the book of this prophecy. Some people say, well, that's just talking about revelation. But you go back in the book of Deuteronomy, we find 4 verse 30, they speak, it speaks about you shall not add to or diminish all from the very beginning. So we're getting down to the Scripture here in Galatians chapter 1 and 6. We're going to find that Paul wrote to Galatians in chapter 1 verse 6. He said, I marvel that you're so soon removed from Him that called you into the grace of Christ into another gospel, which is not another. But there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. In other words, they would change it to some degree. But Paul said, But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Who is, who is the we that Paul is speaking about? Uh, uh, that's, I believe it's the apostles. If you preach another gospel other than what the apostles preach, pre preach another gospel other than what the apostle Paul preached, the Bible says that you'll be accursed. What is the gospel that the apostle Paul preached? Let's go to Acts chapter 19 and verse 2. I know I don't have the display on the screen tonight, but if you'd go with me in your Bible to Acts chapter 19 and verse 2, the Bible said those in Thessalonica were more noble than those in Berea because they, I believe that it says that no, those in Berea were more noble than those others because they searched the scriptures. Acts 19 2 said, He said unto them, This is what the Apostle Paul, Paul said, You can't preach any other gospel than what he had preached unto you. And we've got to look and see exactly what is the gospel that Paul preached. Acts 19 and 2, we're going to find where he is preaching here. Acts 19 and 2, he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Under what then were you baptized? Now that's what we're speaking about tonight, is the, is the mode of baptism. Uh, we both believe, me and uh, Brother uh, Oldfield here, Brother... Uh, James, we believe the same thing. Baptism is essential. You've got to be born of water and of the Spirit or you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. You've got to, the Bible said baptism is for the remission of sins. But let's go and look and see what Paul preached. He said, Under what then were you baptized in Acts 19 and 3? And they said, Under John's baptism. Then said Paul, John barely baptized with a baptism of repentance saying unto the people that they should believe on Him which came after Him, that is on Christ Jesus. And when, when they heard this, the Bible said they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And uh, that's what, exactly what the Apostle Paul preached. We've got to preach the same thing Paul preached. He baptized them in the name of the Lord. Acts chapter 2, what is the gospel that Peter preached? Acts chapter 2 and verse 37 now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? And then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now he said we must be baptized every one of us in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, there's, uh, we're going to get into this little discussion to find out exactly what uh, the doctrine of the Trinity. I, I'm not going to get into that a whole lot. I just want to stick mostly with baptism. I'm sure uh, James might want to have a few questions about it. 
Because this is going to raise some questions when I get to Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. But He said, Be baptized, every one of you, how? In the name of Jesus Christ. How? For the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Why did He say that? Acts chapter 4, verse 10. If you'd like to look with me in your Bible today, in Acts chapter 4, in verse 10, it says, Be it known unto you all. Peter said, this is what he preached, to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God has raised from the dead, even by Him, doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of your builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other. Now, baptism is salvation. You've got to have remission of sins. But the Bible doesn't say baptism is the remission of sins. It says that baptism in the name of Jesus Christ is for the remission of sins. And it says here that this neither is there salvation in any other. And he's going back referring to Acts chapter 4 verse 10, the name of Jesus Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. There is no other name. There is no second name. If Father, Son, and Holy Ghost were names, they would not be sufficient for salvation because the only saving name in the Bible is the name of Jesus. There is no other name. And then the Bible says, This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. This is the stone. The name of Jesus is the stone that people set aside at naught. The Bible said this is the stone that set at naught of you builders. People are building the one they're building, the church. He said the church builders are building the church. And the church is not a building per se. It's a body of baptized believers. And the, the, Bible, the Bible says that this is the stone which is set at naught of your bills. It's the name of Jesus. And you take, and it says, neither is there salvation in any other. And said, this name is the head of the corner. In other words, if you take that name of Jesus out, then your whole building collapses upon you. If it's a headstone, you pull it out, it's one of the most important parts of the building. And we know that the name of Jesus, we're talking about a spiritual body of baptized believers that must be baptized according to the Scriptures in the name of Jesus for the remission of sins. Okay. All right, Marty. Go ahead. Uh, I'm going to ask you to, if you would, step over just a little bit so I can get mine going. All right. Well, I, uh, folks, this is what we're talking about. This is what we're all about, trying to get information out so that we can examine together and reason together. And uh, before I begin, I want to just remind you of what we're discussing so that we can be looking for what we agreed upon. And this is what, folks, I want you to, to notice. This is what Marty must prove. In the name of Jesus, he needs to prove that it means to say the name, that is to call over or to say the phrase in the name of Jesus, to call over that name. Because we're, and I'm going to get this money, we're, we're not denying that in the name of Jesus... Is what baptism must be, is how it must be done. It must be done in the name of Jesus. But when someone was baptized in the New Testament, you need to find, and Marty needs to prove or show, that in the name of Jesus was actually spoken or called out or over the person being baptized. That's what you need to look for, listen for. Now, this is what I'm saying scriptural baptism is in the name of Jesus. Certainly, it's in the name of Jesus. I'm not denying that. No way, shape, or form. I'll never deny it, never have denied it. Scriptural baptism is in the name of Jesus. But what we need to understand and what we're going to show is that in the name of Jesus simply identifies the authority by which a thing is done. It does not necessarily uh, have to have that phrase or that name called out in order for something to be done in the name of Jesus. Scriptural baptism does not have to have uh, the words or phrases, a phrase in the name of Jesus spoken, called out, or over a person being baptized in order to be scriptural. It is in the name of Jesus, but it does not mean that it has those words have to be said. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying that scriptural baptism may or may not, it may be administered saying in the name of Jesus. It may or may not be administered 
saying in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, or it may be a minister saying nothing. It doesn't matter what is, is stated or not stated. If it is done by the authority of Christ, it's done, by, it's done in the name of Jesus. Now, this is what I want to notice. I want to uh, uh, briefly just talk about some things that, that Marty said before I uh, move on. Uh, uh, Deuteronomy 4 and verse 2, he said, uh, don't add uh, anything to the Word. That's, that's true. But friends, I want you to notice that if he doesn't prove... That's, that in the name of Jesus means saying that name, he's actually done what the Bible says don't do. He's added something to it. And then in Galatians 1, 6-9, he said, he quoted right, he read correctly. Paul said, if, it, if though we are an angel for heaven, bring another gospel to you, let him be accursed. Now friends, if he doesn't prove that in the name of Jesus is stating that name, verbally, orally speaking that name of Jesus in baptism, or when someone is doing something in the name of Jesus, then what he's done is he's brought another gospel. And so he's condemning himself. I just want you to notice this. Now, I don't, I'm not mad at Marty. I'm, I haven't met him except for two times, second time I met him. But I notice this, friends. I, I disagree with this doctrine. I'm going to press it. I'm going to press it uh, uh, very uh, adamantly. Now notice this. In, in Acts 19 and verse 2, he goes to the uh, account of the Ephesians being converted, and he says, Paul preached the gospel. Uh, Paul preached to them, and this was the gospel that he preached. In the name of Jesus is how they were baptized. Now he said this word, how. He said, how were they baptized? In the name of Jesus, indicating according to his, his uh, definition, that that name was spoken or that phrase was spoken. Now, friends, he can't prove that. He can't prove it. Uh, Acts 2, verse 37 and 38, Peter did say, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus. But he has to prove that those words were spoken. So, uh, that, that's what we want to notice. Now, uh, let's, let's first start off with the definition here. I want you to notice, friends, that name has a definition. When he says in the name of Jesus, we need to notice some ways that name is, is used. Name, this comes from the Thayer's Lexicon, is a word by which a person or thing is called and distinguished from others. It can be in reference to a proper name or a title, something that distinguishes uh, a, a person from another. It may be if I said the name uh, Jason or Steve or Marty or James, those are titles, those are names that distinguishes uh, individual uh, people. It could be used for, any, for everything that the name covers, such as one's rank, One's authority, one's interest, pleasures, commands, or deeds. That is what it, 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 could, it could be used for that. Or it could be to do a thing by one's command and authority, acting on his behalf or, prompt, or promoting his cause. So if something is done in the name of someone, it can be done by one's commands or because they've told them to do something. Now let's notice something. In Acts 2.38, which Marty cited just a moment ago, Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, that's, that's right. That's what the Bible says. But notice this. Is that what they said? Or is it what they did? Were those people on the day of Pentecost, were they baptized in the name of Jesus? Yes, they were. But was it what was said? Or was it something they did? They said, What must we do? And Peter said, Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. He didn't say you had to say it. He didn't call it over them when they were baptized. He said you had to be baptized in the name of Jesus. And the Bible goes on to say, friends, if you, if you continue reading in Acts chapter 2, you'll notice that the Bible says, And with many other words uh, did he testify and exhort them, saying, Save yourselves from his untoward generation. I mean, he said be baptized in the name of Jesus a, 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 a long time before they were ever baptized, according to the Scripture. And so, verse 41 is where they were gladly baptized. He spoke many other words before they were ever baptized. So, he's going to have to prove that they actually called the name of Jesus over them when they were baptized. Yeah, Acts 8 and verse 16. I don't know that Marty brought this up. I, I was out of the room for just a moment, but I'm sure he'll get to it. Another conversion account. Notice what the Bible says. For uh, as yet, he, the Holy Spirit, was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of Jesus, uh, the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, friends, notice this. Was it something that was said, or was it something they did, or something that was done? Being baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus is not something that's said, it's something that's done. That is what's commanded. That's what's commanded in Acts 10, verse 48. Another verse that I'm sure Marty's going to get to is the, the, um, the conversion of Cornelius. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. 
Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. Now, Peter commanded Cornelius to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Marty has to prove that that was what was said. That was what was said. And he's going to have to prove that if you are baptized without saying uh, Jesus when the baptism is administered, that, that it's invalid. That's what we want to know. Would it be invalid? Maybe he'll want to answer that. Would it be invalid if, it, if it's not spoken? Because the Bible clearly says that this is what they did. Not necessarily what they said. Uh, in Acts 19 and verse 5, this is the, the, uh, 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 the reference he used just moments ago in reference to the folks at Ephesus. When they heard this, that is when they heard that the baptism of John was no longer valid, that John's baptism was a, a baptism pointing to Christ, then the Bible says they were baptized in the name of Jesus. Now, again, was it what was said or was it what they did? See, that's what we're pointing out, friends. This is not something that was said in order to validate the baptism. Baptism is validated if it's done in the name of Jesus. That is, it's done by His command. Now, Jesus commanded baptism. Mark 16, 16, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. There's the command. Therefore, if it's done by His authority, it's done in His name. And that's what we need to look for. So just be watching, be listening for, for Marty to give that phrase that was actually spoken or literally spoken when someone was baptized in the, in the first century. He's not going to find it. He's going to find in the name of Jesus, but he's going to have to prove that it means that name was spoken. Now, let me show you what I mean, friends. When something is done in the name of Jesus, you tell me, you sit and reason for yourself, if in these accounts, these, these uh, uh, places, was it uh, done in the name of Jesus, that is, by being spoken... In Mark 16, 17 and 18, Jesus said, These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. No, uh, they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Now, if in Jesus' name means it must be spoken, and I'm running out of time here, I want you to know this. Why then was Jesus' name not used by Peter? In Acts 5, verse 15, the Bible says that when he went around healing people, as Jesus said they would do in His name, the Bible says that at least a shadow of Peter passing might overshadow some of them so that they would be healed. There also came multitudes out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed every one. Peter's shadow passed over them. No record that he said in Jesus' name. Now certainly he could use that name. In Acts 3 he did. But here's an account where people were healed and the name of Jesus was not spoken. Hello, this is Marty Roberts coming back. Uh, James uh, was speaking about you got to prove where they said the name of Jesus. And then we go to Acts chapter 3 and verse 6. It says, Then Peter said, This is what he said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Acts chapter 16, we find that they also said that Paul used the name. Acts chapter 16 and verse 18, And this did she many days. But Paul being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. Okay, so we see that he said it again. We also find in Acts chapter 22 and verse 16 that they said, Why tarest thou? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling upon the name of the Lord. And we find it that calling on the name of the Lord is Jesus. So if they called on the name of the Lord, Acts chapter 9, verse 5, when uh, Paul said, Who art thou, Lord? The Lord said, I am Jesus. So we know the name of the Lord is Jesus. So the Bible says, Arise and be baptized, calling on the name of the Lord. Uh, he also gave us a uh, uh, definition of what name is. Name can mean, oname comes from a Greek word, oname, which means the name, literal or figurative. So the name could be the literal name, not just a, a calling some item a name, but it could be like Marty is a name, and like James Oldfield is a name. It was something that was said or something that was done. He said, it was it something that was said or something that was done. Now, uh, James said he just believed it was just something that was done. He didn't believe it was nothing that was said. Well, I just read to you the Scriptures where they said in the name of Jesus Christ 
and uh, when we, they were doing some of the deeds. But Colossians chapter 3 and verse 17 says, Whatsoever you do in word or deed, whatever you say or do, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now that is a commandment in the Scriptures. So we can't go past by the Scriptures and say, well, I'm not going to go. And yes, you can show me the little place in there where they say something, then I'm not going to believe it. it but the Bible says to do it in the name of Jesus. So if I'm, it's from the fear of God in my life. I would be afraid not to do what the Bible says. If the Bible says to baptize them in the name of Jesus, then I'm going to do what the Bible says. And that's the reason why. Because I want to make sure souls are going to make it to heaven. And that's the most important thing. James even admitted that that was correct for me to say in the name of Jesus Christ because he cannot deny it because it's in the Scriptures. And anybody could see that's plain as day that baptism in the name of Jesus Christ is in the Bible. So that's the reason why. But, you know, it does say Acts 8 and 12, they believe Philip preaching the things concerning the name of Jesus Christ. They were baptized, both men and women. We find that they continue with Philip and uh, the apostles which were at Jerusalem in Acts 8.14. When the apostles were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the Word of God, they sent on them uh, Peter and John who came down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. Acts 8.16. We find over and over again, for as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, James, if I'm not correct, correct me if I'm wrong, James, uh, that he uses, he does say something over people when he baptizes them. He uses uh, what most people would call the Trinitarian formula. And they get that out of Matthew chapter 28, uh, 19. The same gospel that we, we find, the same gospel that the apostles preached was a we find they were a powerful group of believers that used the name of Jesus as their authority. Even James will even let you know that in his church he'll have to admit to you that he even prays in the name of Jesus. Why? Because the Bible says to do it. But they won't baptize in the name of Jesus. They'll do everything else. But the Bible teaches us that we are to baptize in the name of the Lord Jesus. And whether it's just or, or something they did, if you say it's just something they did, and then it's not something they said, then we're going back, taking away from the Bible again. So we've got to get back into the Scriptures again. They were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now let's go to Matthew chapter 28 and verse 17. It says in Matthew chapter 28 verse 17, When they saw Him, they worshipped Him. If you'd like to go, would you go with, that with me tonight? Since I'm not able to put it up on the wall. Matthew chapter 28 verse 17, When they saw Him, Jesus... They worshipped Him, but some doubted. Now, the reason why some of them doubted didn't worship Him because the Bible said, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and Him only shalt thou serve. For them to bow down and worship to somebody else beside God, then they would be committing a work of blasphemy. They, and Jesus, listen to this, verse 18, Some of them doubted they worshipped Him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, those that doubted Him, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. He said, go ye therefore, praise God, since I have all power, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name. Hallelujah. He didn't say names, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. It said in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost. So, we find that that name is singular. Why did the apostles uh, tell us to baptize in the name of Jesus when Jesus said what He said in Matthew 28, 19? He said, Go you therefore since I have all power and baptize them in the name. Singular. Not names. Father. Not Now, it's not fathers and son and Holy Ghost. Well, if you want to go ahead and argue about saying that they're proper nouns and you could call them a name, sure, fine. But if you use the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost and you call them names, there's no salvation in the name Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. The only name under heaven, Acts 4 verse 12, that's got salvation in it is the name of Jesus. Praise God. I thank God for the restoration movement. People coming out from uh, the old doctrines and pulling out and saying, well, hey, baptism's essential. You've got to be buried, sprinkled. It's not going to do enough. But what about the name of Jesus? Why don't we just go 
out a little bit further and just not just stick with the remission of sins in baptism, just to, but go down and go and do it like the Scriptures teach. They said do it in the name of Jesus. And I don't believe the apostles were doing anything contrary. I've had some say, well, I'd rather do what Jesus said than when I do, it, do what Peter and them said. But you see, what Peter and them did was what Jesus said. They baptized them in the name of Jesus. So he said, I've got all power in heaven and earth. Praise God. So nowhere in the Bible does it teach us to use the words Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. So if we use the words Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, you know, we go in there and we say, well, it says to use the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. We've got to find out what that singular name. Now, let me tell you, my name is Marty. But I'm also, I'm a father and I'm a son. I can be an uncle. And I, you know, I might, and I, I might be a, a nephew or a niece, but my name is not uncle. My name is not a father. My name is not son. My name is Marty. Praise God. So, Father, and Son, and Holy Ghost, I'm not here to win an argument. I'm only here to show you the Scriptures. And if I could just show somebody the light of revelation, and I'd love to see James receive this. There's people, Church of Christ preachers, that's been baptized in the name of Jesus and preached it to the day of their death because they've seen the revelation. But you see, nowhere in the Bible does it teach us to use the words Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. It tells us that we're commanded to baptize in the name. And even Paul said in Colossians 3.17, Whatsoever you do in word, whatever you say, whatever you do, do it all in the name of Jesus. And the reason why, if we go revise in Acts chapter 10, verse 48, another instance, he commanded them, Peter commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Now, if this is just a quibble on words and it's just, well, you know, you, know, you can't prove anything, well then you could go ahead and say, well, you know, James, you can't prove anything, or uh, Marty, he can't prove anything. But let me tell you something. The Scriptures teach us that we have to be baptized in the name of Jesus. And I'd be afraid to do it any other way. Go ahead. Okay. All right. Now, now friend, uh, I mean, I'm not disagreeing with Marty. Baptized in the name of Jesus. But he still hasn't proven that that means you're actually saying those words. Now, my contention is this. You can say those words or you cannot say those words. If you're doing it by the authority of Christ, you're doing it by the authority of Christ. If it's done in, in compliance with the Lord's commands, you're doing it in the name of Jesus whether you say, whether you say anything or not. And I'm going to show you this. Now, I want, to, I want you to, to, uh, to notice this. I want to keep on with this, with this point. Marty keeps saying that I don't, that I don't uh, uh, baptize in the name of Jesus. Well, I'll say this, friends. There are times when I baptize people and I'll say, in the name of Jesus. Or I'll tell them, I'm baptizing you by the authority of Christ. Christ has given me authority to baptize you. I'll baptize in the name of Jesus. I have said the words or that I'm baptizing you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Or I have baptized people and not said anything, Marty, because I don't have to say anything. You know why? Because someone's salvation doesn't depend on what I say. Marty's, Marty's doctrine actually has, has your salvation depending on what he says. I don't know about you, friends, but I don't want my salvation depending on what someone says or doesn't say it. I want to depend upon if I have obeyed Jesus or not. Now... Let's look back at Mark 16, 17, and 18. I want to continue this thought. Jesus said, These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, speak with new tongues, take up, uh, take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly uh, thing, it shall not hurt them. And they lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Now, Marty uh, cited Acts 3, 6 and Acts 16, uh, 18, where the words in the name of Jesus were spoken. I don't deny that. I don't have a problem with, with them being spoken. But here's the thing, friends. It doesn't prove that they must be spoken. You see that? See, he wants to say that just because I say they don't have to be, that means uh, that, that, that they always uh, are. Just because he can find a place where they are doesn't mean they always have to be. And that's my, that's my point. That's my point. He's binding upon you something Jesus wouldn't bind. Now, here we had uh, Peter healing people without saying the name of Jesus. Jesus said it would be done in his name. Peter didn't say a thing about Jesus. In Acts 19, verse 11 and 12, God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. 
so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Now Jesus said that devils will be cast out in his name, and the diseases will be healed in his name. But here we have uh, people bringing handkerchiefs or aprons from Paul, and we don't have any record that Paul said anything. As a matter of fact, we don't have any record that Paul was even there. When it was done, but yet Jesus said it would be done in his name. Now, friends, my point is this. Can something be done in the name of Jesus without in Jesus' name, that phrase being spoken, uh, or called over when the act is performed? I say, yes, it can. You can do something in the name of Jesus without without uh, saying the words in the name of Jesus. In uh, Acts 13, verse 9 Saul, who was also called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes up, up on him and said, O full, o full of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, thou wilt not cease to perverse the right ways of the Lord. Now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind and not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness, and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. Now, this was what Paul said to Elimaeus who was trying to keep the deputy from obeying the gospel. And he put, a, uh, uh, he, he put blindness or cast blindness upon this man because he was trying to pervert the ways of the Lord. And he was blind. He could not see. Now, I want you to notice something. These are Paul's exact words. And, and Jesus' name was not even mentioned. Now, my question is, did Paul do this in the name of Jesus? Or did he not do it in the name of Jesus? If he didn't do it in the name of Jesus, Marty needs to tell us how he did it. And if he did do it in the name of Jesus, Marty needs to tell us, why didn't he say in Jesus' name? Why didn't he say in Jesus' name, see? Because it doesn't depend upon what you say. It depends on do you have the authority to do it. That's what we're talking about. Look at this. In Acts 28, verses 2 through 6. Here's uh, uh, the account where Saul, Paul, has been shipwrecked. They come up on an island, they catch up on an island, and they're gathering firewood. And notice, and the barbarous people showed us no little kindness, for they kindled a fire, and received us every one, because of the present rain and because of the cold. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said among themselves, No doubt this man is a murderer, whom though he hath escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffereth not to live. And he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. Now watch this. Howbeit they looked when he should have been swollen or fallen down dead suddenly, but after, uh, after uh, they had looked a great while and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said he was a god. Now friends, Jesus said they can take up serpents and they won't be hurt. This, the very thing Jesus said would be done in his name, happened to Paul, and Paul shook that beast, that viper, off into the fire without so much as an ouch in Jesus' name. He didn't say Jesus' name one bit. He shook the, the viper off in the fire and didn't say a thing. I don't know about you, but if I'd been bit by a viper, I'd have said ouch or something. But Paul didn't. Why? Well, because it does not depend upon saying in the name of Jesus. Marty is pressing the point that you have to say it. He said he would be afraid not to say anything when he was doing something. Well, friends, I tell you right now that Marty has been up here preaching. And you know what? You should preach in the name of Jesus or by the authority of Jesus. And I hadn't heard Marty say, in the name of Jesus, I'm preaching this. Now, we've been talking about the name of Jesus. See, he says you have to call out the name, but I haven't heard him state that he's doing this by the name of Jesus. We've been talking about it. I don't know, maybe that counts if you just say it. But Paul didn't say a word when he's bit by a snake. Friends, you see, nothing has to be said. Uh, it may or may not be said when you're doing it in the name of Jesus. Let me give you another example. How many time we got? All right, John 14, 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, now this is Jesus talking, whom the Father will send, notice, in my name, in my name, the Holy Ghost is going to come in the name of Jesus. And He will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Now, this happened in Acts 2. I know Marty's not going to deny that. That's when this took place. That's when this was fulfilled. It happened in Acts 2. But notice this. What does the Bible say happened? Jesus said it was going to, the Holy Spirit was going to be sent in His name. That this event was going to take place in His name. But the Bible says, And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like of the fire, and sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, friend, Jesus said the Father would send the Holy Spirit in His name. 
Marty says that in his name means that the name of Jesus is actually spoken. But you know what? I don't hear a single thing said about Jesus' name here. The only thing you hear is, a, is, a, is the sound of a rushing mighty wind. Now, Marty's going to have to prove that that was the Lord saying, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. I don't think he was. And I don't think Marty's going to say it. But you know what? If it was done in Jesus' name, and in Jesus' name has to be spoken, Marty's going to have to tell us why it wasn't done in Jesus' name. Why those names weren't spoken if, in fact, it was done in Jesus' name. You know why the Father didn't say in the name of Jesus? It's because doing something in the name of Jesus. Now watch this. Does not necessarily does not necessarily require saying anything. Not even saying Jesus. You can say in the name of Jesus. And it was the case in Acts 3, as, as Marty brought up, when Peter healed that man, he was simply telling him by whose authority he was going to be healed. If you read in Acts 4, which we'll get into a, a little bit later, but in Acts 4, that's exactly what Peter was defending. He said, if you think we've done this by our power, then you're wrong. We've done this by the power or the authority of Jesus. And so his statement that it was done in the name of Jesus was simply to show or to, to inform the person by whose authority it was being done. But as we've said, as we've cited uh, earlier, in Acts 5, Peter healed people and didn't say in Jesus' name. There are other occasions where people were healed, but it wasn't done in Jesus' name. So it must be the case that it can be stated it's done in Jesus' name. Or it doesn't have to be stated it's done in Jesus' name. See, it doesn't depend upon what a person says. Marty says it does depend. Marty says it, you have to say that name. You have to say that name. And if you say anything else like in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, it's wrong. You're not saved. I don't know if I have the right quote, but uh, uh, there's no salvation in the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost by saying that. Well, Marty's going to prove that. Marty's going to prove that you have to say the phrase in the name of Jesus. He hasn't done it, friends. He's, he cited a lot of verses that say things were done in the name of Jesus, and that's fine. I believe that. I agree with that. But I don't agree with the fact that something has to be said in order for it to be done in the name of Jesus. And that's what he has to prove. You have to be listening for it. Uh, all right. James was talking about earlier what he doesn't want his salvation depending on what somebody <laughs> says. Okay, but we find that they did say in the name of Jesus. In the Bible, I did prove that they did say in the name of Jesus. And, uh, what, and he said he didn't want a salvation depending on what somebody says. What about what somebody does? Okay, well, I believe what, that, what they did say in the name of Jesus when they draw those handkerchiefs from the Apostle Paul. Just because they didn't say that they said it doesn't mean that they didn't say it. Because I believe they went according to what they commanded. I don't believe uh, Jesus had long hair because the Bible teaches that men shouldn't have long hair because it's a shame. You know, and some people paint it, but it's just because it doesn't say Jesus, didn't, uh, Jesus had short hair, then people can draw any picture they want. But look, listen to this. It didn't say that they said in the name of Jesus, uh, but it doesn't mean they didn't say it. It didn't matter when Paul shook the snake off in the fire. It doesn't, the Bible doesn't go and require everything over and over again. There's even places in the Bible that James will even agree with me. They said the believers were much more added to the Lord. It doesn't say they were baptized either. Just because it didn't say they were baptized. Both me, him and I both know because baptism is absent there in that Scripture doesn't mean that they believed and they were added to the Lord. It it doesn't mean that we believe me and him, neither one's going to change our doctrine and say, well, I, I believe, well, you don't even have to be baptized now because they were the believers who added to the Lord. So we've got to go back to the Bible and just because they didn't say that they said in the name of Jesus, we just have a few instances we find where continuously over and over again, the apostles were told, even in Mark 16 and 17, he said, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. But these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they do these things. Cast out devils. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. So we find that they, he, Jesus said that they were going to do it in His name. And uh, James is saying it's just, just the authority. Well, that's fine. If that's what, it, if that's what He says is, is the authority, then, then I'm still, according to that doctrine, I'm still saved. 
But according to what I'm teaching is that if they don't say in the name of Jesus Christ, like Peter did when he stood over the, the man and he said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And we also find it, which is a scripture I don't really have right here in my, my Bible, my, my computer here, but there's another scripture here that tells us that when Peter healed them, uh, it says that uh, stretching forth, uh, Acts chapter 4 and verse 30, stretching forth by hand to heal, that signs and wonders may be done by the name of the Holy Child Jesus. All right, then we find just because, and then here it is. They said, Didn't we not straightly command you that you should not teach in this name? If we never say the name, how's people going to know whose authority we're even baptizing in? Or whose authority we're praying in? We could be ba praying and, and baptizing people and, and believing people to be healed in the, the name of Buddha, as far as that goes, because, or whatever other religion believes in healing and salvation. Uh, but without saying the name of Jesus, then we're not really operating in the name of Jesus. So just because they didn't say that they said doesn't mean they didn't say it. Just like when believers are added to the Lord in different scriptures that throughout the uh, te uh, New Testament here in the book of Acts, just because it's omitted and not shown there doesn't mean that they didn't do it. It's because Paul shook the snake off the fire. Now James said he didn't just, Paul shook the viper off in the fire and didn't say anything. Well, you and I know better than that. He said something when he shook that snake off in the fire, and he would be foolish, Apostle Paul, if he didn't say in the name of Jesus. Just because they didn't show or write it down. You know, the Bible doesn't just continually go over and over again saying the same thing over and again. But Luke, let's get back here just a little while longer. I'm, I'm, I'm rebuttal. I'm supposed to be in the affirmative tonight, but I'm answering some of the questions here just because I want to go ahead and get a hold of them. But Peter in Acts chapter 10 and verse 48 commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Revised Standard Version says in the name of Jesus. Luke chapter 24 verse 46, Jesus said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behoved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in His name among all nations. What's Christ's name? Beginning at Jerusalem. We find that the apostles baptized in Jerusalem. James said he baptized in the name of Jesus. I can always, but he's got to believe that that's for the remission of sins. Acts chapter 2 verse 38 says that you've got to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Now, he says you don't have to say it. Well, why did they put it in there? Why didn't you say be baptized for the remission of sins? But they put in the name of Jesus. So what we're doing here when we do that is we're omitting or taking away from the word of the Lord. Now, the apostle Paul to prove something here, let's go to Acts chapter 19. Before we run out of time here, I'd like to get on this scripture that the Apostle Paul met these people at Ephesus. He said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Acts chapter 19 and verse 2. He said, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what then were you baptized? That's the Apostle Paul's teaching. He said, you teach anything else, he said, you'll be accursed. Under what then were you baptized? And they said, under John's baptism. Verse 4, then said Paul, John barely baptized with a baptism of repentance, saying unto the people which had come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. And when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Okay? John the Baptist dunked them in the water. And most people today, if they say, I've been baptized by John the Baptist, would say, I'm pretty well off. I'm, I, it don't make, make no difference what you say. But when they, Paul took them back down the water and baptized them in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now tell me, James, what's the difference between John's baptism and Paul's baptism? If there wasn't a difference, because both of them took them down to the water and both of them took them to the uh, uh, one. John took them to the Jordan River and dumped them all the way under. And it, I, I submit to you the fact the difference is that Paul baptized them in the name of the Lord Jesus. Okay, so Philippians reason why? Why do we do this? Why do we say so much about the name of Jesus? Because Jesus said repentance and remission of sins should be preached in His name among all nations. Philippians chapter 2 verse 9, God has highly exalted Him, giving Him a name which is above every name. 
that the name of Jesus every knee should bow things in heaven, uh, things in earth, and things in the earth. So we find it's a name above every name. A name, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 20 and 21, that's above every name is name, not only in this world, but in the world which is to come. Because if it's a highest exalted name, I've had people come to me and say, Jehovah, Jehovah, Jehovah. I say, well, what's the greatest name? And they'll say, Jehovah. I say, well, you need to go to Philippians 2 and 9 and find the name that's exalted above every name. It's the highest name on this world. It's the name of Jesus. That's why we're so privileged to go down in the water in the name of Jesus. All right, what about the blood? Let's get the blood issue in this thing. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22. It says, Almost all things are by the, blood, uh, by the law purged with blood. Hebrews 9, 22. If you'd like to look. And without shedding of blood, there is no remission. Okay? You can't make it to heaven without your sins being remitted. And the Bible tells us in Acts 2.38 that repentance and, and, and baptism in the name of Jesus Christ is for the remission of sins. Because Peter said be baptized. We spoke about that. But let's look at Acts chapter 10 and verse 43 and find out where the remission is. James, I'd like to ask you a question. Is baptism, is remission of sins in baptism alone? Or is baptism in the name? Uh, remission of sins in the name? Okay, of Jesus. Because Acts 10 and 43 said to him, Jesus, give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believes in him shall receive remission of sins. How do we receive remission of sins? Through his name. Okay, repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name. Where is remission of sins? It's not in water baptism alone. We've got to go by the scriptures. I'm not going to go out here and say I'll baptize you for the remission of sins. I'm going to mention the name of Jesus. Because I believe there's salvation in the name of Jesus. I still, I just, I guess I'm old fashioned to believe what the Bible says. I guess maybe I'm a little more dogmatic. Maybe I'm just maybe too much. I, I don't know. I'm just trying to get the pattern down. Trying to see people get saved. Just make sure that we get things right before we leave this world. And I, if the Bible says baptize in the name of Jesus, that's the way I'm going to do it. And if they said the name of Jesus over anything, if that, that means it gives me the authority to go ahead and do the same thing. I'm going to baptize in Jesus' name. The significance of efficacy of baptism is certainly not in water itself. And if there is something holy about the, there's nothing as if there's something holy about water, the power in baptism is plain and simple. It is in the saving name of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> All right. Well, uh, come back to my screen, please. Uh, all right. I want to uh, answer some of these things that Marty's been saying while we while I go through this last. This is our last, our last speech, isn't it? All right. Well, let's let's talk a little bit about in the name, and I want to answer some of Marty's questions as we go along. But uh, uh, notice something. Let's let the Bible tell us what in the name means. Marty still insists that it means you have to say it. But friends, that's just not in the Bible. It's not in the Bible that says you must say it. It's not said we well, must say it. No, it, they did it in the name, but that doesn't mean they said it in the name. He hasn't proven that they said it. He didn't say they. He didn't prove they said it. They just did it in the name, and he thinks that means they said it. Well, let's just notice this. In John fourteen fourteen, Jesus said, "If you ask anything in my name, I will do it." Now, this is what this means, friends. In First John five fourteen, notice what we have. This is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. That's what we're saying about in His name. In His name means you've been obedient to His authority. You've done it according to His will. Marty seemed to say that you have to say it. Well, he hadn't proven it. Hadn't proven it. Now, he mentioned uh, preaching repentance in the, in the uh, uh, name of Jesus. Uh, Luke 24, 47, 48. Notice this. That repentance and remission of sins should be preached in His name among all nations. Well, you know what, friends? The easiest thing to do to find out if that means you have to say in the name of Jesus is just go through and see if they said it. Now, he wants to believe that they said it uh, when they baptized someone because it says that it was done in the name of Jesus. Well, let's just look about preaching repentance then. When, repent when repentance was preached, did the apostles say in the name of Jesus like Marty says they called out at baptism? Let's just look at this. In Acts 3 and verse 19, Acts 3 and verse 19, the Bible says, here's Peter, he says, Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out when the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. 
Now, did he say repent in the name of the Lord? No, he didn't. He didn't say repent in the name of the Lord. Repentance was preached because that's what Jesus gave the authority or gave the command to preach. Well, no repentance there. Acts 20, verse 21. Testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward the Lord Jesus. Now, here they were testifying about repentance. Now, I don't see in the name of Jesus in that verse. I don't see in the name of Jesus in that. Acts 26 and verse 20. Uh, Paul says, But he showed first unto them of Damascus at Jerusalem and throughout all the coast of Judea, and then to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. You know what, friends, here's what you find. Did anyone in these accounts, when they're preaching repentance, did they say in Jesus' name in connection with any of those sermons on repentance? Not a single time. As a matter of fact, notice this, friends. Notice this. In Paul's sermon on Mars Hill, we know repentance was preached in the name of Jesus. That doesn't mean in Jesus' name was specifically stated. It doesn't have to be in order to be preached in the name of Jesus. Look at this. In Acts 17, verse 30. In the times of this ignorance, uh, God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Because he hath appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance to all men, the end that he raised him from the dead. Now, friends, this is Paul's sermon on Mars Hill. Starts in Acts 17, verse 22, goes all the way through the rest of the chapter, almost to the rest of the chapter. And notice this. In this sermon, Paul specifically says God commands all men everywhere to repent. But I want you to notice this. In this sermon, Paul did not even say Jesus' name. He didn't even say the name of Jesus. He says, that man. And Marty wants to say, well, preaching is in the name of Jesus. You know what? Preaching repentance is in the name of Jesus. But did Paul, say, did Paul do something wrong? Did Paul not preach repentance in the name of Jesus when he didn't even say his name? He didn't even call out his name. He just said, that man. See? He just said, that man. Marty must, must think that Paul missed it right here. Paul, you didn't preach repentance in the name of Jesus because you didn't say in Jesus' name. Friends, it doesn't mean you have to say in Jesus' name because you can say in Jesus' name and not be doing something by the authority of Jesus. In Acts 19 and verse 13, the sons of Sceva tried to cast out demons by calling uh, over a man possessed the name of Jesus and it didn't work. So it's not saying the name, friends. It's doing what the Lord has said. That's what we're talking about now. He talked a little bit about the name of Jesus, and I want to point this out. If baptism requires saying the name of Jesus, then I want you to notice, we need to find out if Jesus had, is the only name He has. Marty says it's the name above all names. We're going to see if that's true or not. In Matthew 1, 21, the Bible says, She shall bring forth a son, and I shall call his name Jesus. To save his people from their sins. Well, that's true. That is his name. But notice this. In verse 23, two verses later, the Bible says, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. His name is Emmanuel. Here his name's Jesus. Here his name's Emmanuel. Well, he's got two names so far. Notice this. In Mark 13, 6, Mark 13, 6, uh, For many shall call in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Can somebody please answer that phone? Uh, for, uh, shall, uh, uh, his name is Christ. Now, we've already seen the name of Jesus. His name is Christ. And his name is Emmanuel. But notice this. In Revelation 19, 12, his, his eyes were as fly, uh, flame of fire and his head were as many crowns. And he had a name. What's his name? He had a name that written that no man knew but he himself. He was clothed in a vesture dripped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Now, friends, we've got the Word of God. We've got Emmanuel. We've got Christ. We've got Jesus. And here we've got a name, King of kings and Lord of lords. In Isaiah 9, 6, Wonderful counselor of the mighty God, the everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And I know we're going to get into that later if, if Marty wants to come back and, and uh, discuss another topic. But notice this, friends. These are all his names. Now, Marty's going to say, well, all those are titles. All those are titles. Friends, notice this. Marty says that Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are titles. But look at this. In Hebrews 1 verse 4, Hebrews 1 verse 4, the Bible says, that speaking of Jesus, being made so much better than angels, he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent title. Is that what it says, Marty? No, it says name. They have a more excellent name. He has a more excellent name for unto uh, which of the angels said he at any time. Now watch it. We're going to find out what that name is. What is that more excellent name? For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son. 
Thou art my son. This day I have begotten thee, and again I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. His name is a son. Now, Marty wants son to be a title, but the Bible says it is a name. Friends, I'm going to take the Bible. Marty said he wants to know, he wants to take what the Bible says. Well, let's see if he'll take son as a name instead of just a little title. The names of Jesus. Now, if baptism requires saying the name of Jesus, and Jesus is a name or a title, then why not use other names that belong to Jesus? Marty won't say, I baptize you in the name of Christ. He won't say, I baptize you in the name of Emmanuel. He won't say, I baptize you in the name of the Word of the Lord, Word of God, because he says that your salvation depends upon him saying the name of Jesus. Friends, again, your salvation depends on if Marty utters it right. See, if you come to Marty, it's going gonna, it's gonna to depend that he makes sure that says the right things. And I don't think, uh, I don't think you want, want that. Now, in Acts 4 and verse 12, he brought this up. There is salvation in none other, for there is none other name given under heaven given among men where we must be saved. Now, friends, notice this. None other name. Let's notice what this means. Is that referring to another word or another person? When, when Peter says this, he's not talking about the, uh, stating a name. In other words, you, he's not saying, Peter's not saying, you cannot call out another word and have salvation. Marty seems to think that salvation is obtained the minute you say the name of Jesus. Now, a while ago he said, uh, uh, let's see, uh, that, that you have to uh, say uh, Jesus in baptism. And I have down here, you know what I want to say is, Marty might as well preach uh, in the baptistry. Because he seemed to think that salvation or the name of Jesus has to be called out right when you get in the water. Well, Marty, when I preach uh, uh, the gospel, I'm telling people about being saved and being baptized in the name of Jesus a long time before they get to the baptistry. Marty must, must stand in the baptistry when he preaches because he thinks that must be the only place where you can say the name of Jesus. Friends, I have told people uh, about, about whose authority they should be baptized a long time before they get there. Peter is talking about a person, not a word. Now... I want to say this. Look at this. By the name of Jesus, even by Him. Peter's not saying by another word. He's saying by the person. Now, uh, Philippians 2.10, At the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. You know what, friends? Every time, Marty would say, every time a person hears Jesus or sees the word Jesus, do they bow down? No. I have been saying Jesus, I believe, about 45 times tonight, and I haven't seen Marty bow down once. You know why? Because it's not talking about the name of Jesus. It's talking about His authority. Every knee shall bow and render obedience to Christ. They should submit to His will because He is King of kings and He's Lord of lords. And if it means that you should bow down every time you hear the name of Jesus, I don't know why Marty hadn't been bowing. Okay. Uh, uh, question and answers. Marty, I... Uh, uh, I don't know if you want to go first or, or not. Doesn't matter to me. What what do you uh, what do you prefer? Yeah, Jeff, it's what I'm waiting All for. right. Well, just you want to ask your first question. That'd be fine. Okay. Well, the question I like to ask you is: What is the difference between John's baptism and Paul's baptism? All right. The difference between John's baptism and Paul's baptism. Well, that's, that's pretty simple. It's right here in the Bible. In Acts 19, let's all go to Acts chapter 19. And uh, we'll just pick up in verse 1. Now, Marty wants to, wants to think that uh, the difference is what was said. But you know, I don't, I don't know that John said, I baptize you in the name of me. I think he said baptism was a baptism of repentance for the midst of sins. He said, repent and bring forth fruit, meat for repentance. That's what he was saying. It was a baptism of repentance. The difference is in Acts 19 and verse 4. Here's the difference. Paul said, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. Now there's the difference. The difference is John's baptism was a preparatory baptism. It was to uh, make a, make the way for the Lord. It was to prepare a people for the, for the Lord. Luke chapter 1, and uh, I'm just going to say verse 17, I believe. John's baptism was a preparatory baptism, getting people ready for the Lord. The, uh, uh, the difference isn't what was stated. It was the reason why it was done. Uh, Luke 1 
uh, 17, and he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias and turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the uh, wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. There's the difference. John was a preparatory baptism, and once Christ died, baptism was for the remission of sins, and thus it was by his authority. Until that time, it was it was a, 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 a baptism that was preached by John who was sent by God. Now you have Christ... A, the Savior has come, and now you must render obedience to Him. So it's not what was said. It was the, the purpose of the baptism. One was for the remission of sins because Christ came, and John's was because Christ hadn't come yet. You need to get ready for Him. Well, John baptized. He believed that he that cometh, he said, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. And he's talking about Jesus he, and he took them down in the water and buried them. And the, why was it so critical if that just doesn't make no difference what you say or it doesn't matter what you say or what you do, then why was it, was it so critical that they took them back down into the water? That's what I'm trying to ask you. Well, the, the reason for us because they were baptized with the understanding that Jesus was still to come. But Jesus already come. It wasn't what was said. They understood that that Jesus was still yet to come. That was John's baptism. That's Acts 19.4. It's right there in the text. They, and so when they understood, you know what? We have been baptized with an invalid baptism. We need to, we need to be baptized with the, with the authoritative baptism. That is one that is authorized by Christ. Not one that was authorized by John. Well, how would you know whether they are authorized by Christ if you don't even let people know whose authority you're baptizing them? Well, can you let someone know by whose authority you're baptizing them uh, by before you get to the baptistry? What if I told someone uh, at the back of the church building, you know what, you need to be baptized because Jesus said you need to be baptized. And if, you are, if I baptize you, I'm going to baptize you by the authority of Christ. Now, what if I get to the baptistry? Do I still have to call something over? You think you're saying then that John the Baptist did not baptize in the authority of Christ then. Then whose authority did he baptize in? Well, the Bible says there was a man sent from God. It was God's authority by who, by, uh, that he was baptizing by. But it doesn't make no difference then. If it's God, then it was according to what you believe. It doesn't make no difference what you say. So if his authority was God's authority, then why would, he take, why would Paul take him back down to the water? He was trying to establish something because to he, the disciples no, of the, John he was, the Baptist. He was trying to establish that you have been baptized with a baptism that's no longer valid. Could it be possible... That Paul said in the name of Jesus Christ when he baptized him, when it says in the Bible that he baptized him in the name well, of Jesus. Well, it's possible, but just because just because it says he baptized in the name of Jesus doesn't prove that he said it. Okay, that's so you're begging the question by saying, well, it was done in the name of Jesus, therefore, therefore, uh, 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 it, he must have said it. Well, you that's what I'm saying. Now, 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 now answer my question about the, if I tell someone that you need to be baptized by the authority of Christ at the back of the church building, then when I get to the baptistry, do I still have to tell them that they're being baptized in the name of Jesus? I if, I I, tell them, if I tell them I'm on the street. Well, I wouldn't want to just tell somebody. I would want to, to, to them, to everyone, to know the authority. Well, what if, it's just, you and, what what if it's just you and me? What if we're the only ones standing there? And you tell I me... I still would take going, you to the water and baptize you and say in the name of Jesus. And you would say it, even though you've already told me outside. Right. So, so in other words, my salvation would depend upon what you say. Depend, that's what the Bible says. No, it doesn't. You haven't proved that. I told you. No, 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 you didn't. No, you didn't. Baptize in the name of Jesus. No, you didn't say that. So okay, you find, you're right. saying I got to prove it. Yeah, you're right. You you gotta, gotta I got to prove it. They said. It. Well, I told you in the Bible where they 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 it said says, some going to have another. Now that wasn't baptism. Well, that was that was that was a healing. And well, Paul not, said, "Whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all word is what you say, isn't it?" Well, it, it is. But do okay. I, does that mean I have to say in the name of Jesus? Yes. No, it doesn't. So uh, you, you can't prove that either. Now, it's every, You're telling you, me i got to prove it. Everything, right? thing, though, but you everything you say, everything you say, you say in the name of Jesus after you say it or before you say it? Everything I say? Yeah. When I do it in His authority, when I go to do something for Him. But you, no, but you, do you have to say it? You have, I do it when I do anything according to the scriptures. When I, when you, when I ask you my question, to the Bible. now it's my turn to ask a question, but when, when I ask you this question and you give your answer, I want you to, every answer I, you give me, you say in the name of Jesus because that's what you believe in, word or deed. 
Whenever I do something, yeah. I got to do it you in have the to name say of Jesus. It. You have to say it in the name of Jesus. Because that's, that's, your, that's your doctrine. You have to say it. But you haven't been saying it. Well, the Bible says to do it in the baptism in the name of Jesus. I can, do, I can baptize in the name of Jesus without saying it. You still haven't proven that in the name of Jesus means you say it. Now, here's my question. What are the actual words uttered? Well, you haven't proved that we can't, don't, have to, don't have to say it either. I don't have to prove you don't have to say it, Marty. You have to prove that you have to say it. See, the burden of proof is not on me. You're, you're affirming that it is something that must be done. And you haven't proven that it must be done. Nowhere in the Bible does it say this is what you must do. I read the scripture after scripture. No, you didn't. Well, give me, give me the scripture on this. What are the actual words uttered in any of the conversion accounts in the book of Acts? Okay, I'm going to go back to that one where you said Acts 17. The book, chapter, and verse. Acts chapter 17 and then verse 20, uh, 30. You said the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commands all men everywhere to repent. Mm -hmm. And you said nowhere did they say in the name of Jesus. Not in that sermon. Okay. Neither did they say anything about baptism. But does that mean we don't need to be baptized? No, that's not the point. But that is the point. No, I'm, it's the same point. No, it's not. No, I'm talking. We said repentance in the name of Jesus. They left baptism out, so does no, that mean I, we no. just got to repent? The point with that, Marty, was in Luke 24, 47 and 48, repentance must be preached in His name. And here my statement is, Paul did not say anything about Jesus when he said repent. Now, did he do it in Jesus' name or not? Well, you weren't there, so how would you know? Did he do it or not? Here's his words right here. That, that's well, the end of the sermon mean, right there. That's the end of the sermon. And when they heard the resurrection of the dead, they mocked. Now, that's it. Now, in that sermon, verses 20, Acts 17, 22 through 31, did, Jesus say any, did Paul say anything about Jesus' name and repentance in his name? Not there in the Scripture, no. That's your sermon right not there. Not in the Scripture. That's no. your sermon right there. It doesn't mean he didn't. It, well, Marty, mean he didn't now, Marty you, you're begging the question to say that he did. Where did he say? Where did he say? He, here's the words, his actual word. Do you believe that this is the actual his sermon? Yes, sir. So I, where is I it? Where is that's the most important part of where is his Where is his words? Repent in the name of Jesus. Where, what does he say? Anything about baptism? I, he didn't get to baptism. Okay. Well, he didn't get to the name either. Yeah, well, yes, he did. If he well, preached, because it's the if, same Marty, thing. Marty, if he preached, and you say I'm begging Marty, no question. No, if he know, if he preached, I'm not begging no question. All right, Luke 24. Everybody can see this. Luke 24, 47, 48. Preach yeah. repentance in His name. Paul preached repentance, but didn't say Jesus. There's his whole sermon. He didn't say Jesus. Well, he didn't say baptism. Now, my did. my question is, did he do it in the name of Jesus? Because if he didn't say it, what I'm trying to get to, you, James, is. Because it's not um, because it's omitted in one place, it was established so many times. No, it was It wasn't established. Marty. Acts chapter two verse you're thirty-eight. Saying, Acts chapter you're, eight verse Marty. You're still sixteen. Acts chapter nineteen and verse five. No other. The Bible said, "Out of mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established." Show me where in the Bible where anybody was ever baptized used, using a formula, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Show me in the Bible where there is a formula for it. You said, you're still saying, Marty, that because it was done in the name of Jesus, that that was what was spoken. And my question to you is right here that you haven't answered. What were the actual words uttered when someone was baptized in the book of Acts? When what were the actual words? Acts chapter 22, verse 16 says, right, Why tarest thou, arise and be baptized, washing away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Okay. So What's who, the name of the Lord? Who did the calling? Jesus. Who did the calling? The people. Well, I thought you called out Jesus. Well, I can do the it. The baptizer or the baptizee. Who did it? The one being baptized or the one Well, the people being baptized too. They called out Jesus, the name yeah, of the Lord? I believe now, it. All right, now let's look at Acts, Acts 20. Folks, I want you to look at Acts 20 16 since you brought this up. Now, calling on the name of the Lord. Now, you're, you're going to ask me. I know you're saying, well, what's the name of the Lord? But you know what? It's not in that verse. Jesus is not in that verse. Peter yes, he is. He's in that verse. The name Jesus is not there. The word, yes, it is. The word Jesus is not there. The word Jesus, but it's... it's uh, like I said so, if, so Paul said... So Paul said Let me I'm go to Acts 9 and 5. Then let's go to Acts 9 and 5. But you, still have, you still haven't answered this question, Marty. I answered your question about... about uh, what question? About, is it actually, I said, what are the actual words uttered when they baptize someone in the in book the of Acts? In the name of Jesus. And where is that verse? We were commanded to do that. Where is the verse that says, I baptize you in the name of Jesus? 
They didn't do it. In Acts 8, what did Philip say? It says they were baptized in the name of the Lord in Acts Jesus. 8, in Acts 8, Philip didn't say anything. What do you mean Philip didn't say anything? In Acts 8, when Philip... Philip ain't not even baptized in America. In, in Acts, Acts 8, 8, Philip baptized again. Oh, yeah, he did. Yes, he did. For his head has fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, you're saying, i got to prove that they said it. Yeah, you've got to prove they said it. So you're just saying, well, let's just take out the, the name of Jesus out of water baptism because it don't matter what you say when you baptize people. You just take them to the water and not say anything over them, right? If I have, already told, them, if I have already told them by whose authority, who they're obeying, they're obeying Jesus when He says be baptized. Now, I don't have to tell them that they're being baptized in the name of Jesus if I've already told them. So you're putting their salvation depending upon what you say over them. Well, and that's I not just, the Bible. I guess I'm going you, up to believe God. the Bible. Well, when you, they tell you know, me to do it in the name of Jesus, Jesus. I'm going right. up you to have, believe i got to do it in the name you, of Jesus. You, you have another question? We're, um, we're running out of time. We're out. you got seven minutes of questions left. Okay. Let me see and, here. And we haven't got through many, many of them. Um, we uh, need to try to keep a little... We need to just, be more succinct on our answers, I guess, or pithy on our answers. Okay, if the apostle was baptized in the name of Jesus, and Jesus told him to baptize in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, why would they do it in the name of Jesus when Jesus said do it in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost? Well, number one, they can do it in the name of Jesus when they're baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Just because when Jesus said baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that does not mean that is what Jesus is saying you must say. Just like in the name of Jesus doesn't mean that's something you must say. In the name of Jesus is by his authority. Would you agree with that? Yes. So if I do something by his authority, do I have to come and say every time I do it, I'm doing well, it by the authority of Christ? When they came in the authority of David, they said, who is David? Exactly. Because, because they knew he mentioned the name of right. David. But here's the thing, Marty. There, and I'm not saying that you can't say that. But I'm asking you, do you have to say it? You say they have to say it. What if I already knew who, by whose authority you're coming? Do you think every time Paul came, into, came to Corinth to preach, he's written all these letters to Corinth, and every time he came to preach, he said, now I'm coming to you in the authority of the Lord. Do you think he had to tell them who he was? They knew who he was. They knew by whose authority he was preaching. You see? Well, if, always... if, it's, if, it's, if it's the case where you don't know, yes, you would certainly tell someone by the authority of Christ. But if I know by whose authority you're preaching, then I don't have to say whose authority it is. That's, I mean, what, you, that's what you say. No, that's, that is... Whatsoever you do in word or deed. You still haven't answered that, that one. Do you, haven't, you didn't answer your question in the name of the Lord either. You didn't say in the name of the Lord, here's my answer. You, you still haven't answered that one I asked you about word. Now, is, is in word, word or deed? Is something you say. If right? I'm doing something in word, Marty, then I'm doing it by the authority of Christ. If I'm preaching... Then I'm, then I'm preaching in word by the authority of Christ. I don't have to tell everybody I'm whatever preaching by the authority I do, of Christ. If I, I believe that Bible, scripture means whenever I do in word, whatever I say, when it comes to the gospel, well, we need to do it in the name of Jesus. But you didn't say, you didn't tell everybody that. You didn't say, I'm coming here tonight in the name of Jesus. You didn't say that. Now, how are we supposed to know you're coming here in the name of Jesus? You didn't tell us. Your, your position is you have to say it, but you didn't say it. So you didn't state it. So you don't actually believe what you say you believe. If it means you have to say in the name of Jesus in order for it to be done in word or deed, then why didn't you do it? Jesus said, if you give a cup of water in my name. Now, do I, if I, do I have to do a Christian deed? Do I have to say I'm doing this by the authority of Christ in order to do a Christian deed? Or can I just do I'll it? I'll give him the glory by giving Well, I will too. I tell people I'm a Christian. You, you pray know? in the name of Jesus, don't you? I, I pray in the name of Jesus. But do I, if I if I don't conclude my prayer by saying in the name of Jesus, is it is it does it go no higher than the ceiling? Do you not pray and conclude in the name of Jesus? I do. But what if but I do? You know the devil. What if I don't? Well, you'll be just like the rest of the people out here that's going around and, and preaching everywhere and, and we're not afraid to say the name so, of Jesus. So have you ever have you ever been in bed at night and, and fallen asleep praying? Fallen asleep praying? Yeah. Just, just, just a few times. No, no. Like I've learned not to pray by four. Well, I'm, I'm just saying, though, but if you've done that, did your prayer get answered? If you didn't conclude it by saying in the name of Jesus? You fell asleep before you said in, the, in Jesus' name? Does God not know by whose authority you're praying to Him? Yeah. See? I don't have to tell God by whose authority I'm coming to His throne. He knows who I am. 
He knows. He knows I have the authority to pray to him. All right. Let me. Let me. Let's. Let's move on. Uh, I, 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 I. Let's see. Um, I don't know if I want to answer that one. Is uh, if a person was baptized with the words, "I baptize you in the name of the Father." And of the Son, Jesus Christ, and of the Holy Ghost being spoken, would that person have their sins forgiven? I don't believe so. Why not? Because it's in the name of Jesus right there. We don't know what Holy Ghost and who the, who the Father is and who the Son is that you're talking about. I just said the, the, the Father, Son, and the Son, Jesus Christ. Well, you said the Son, Jesus Christ. I'm just talking about the Matthew 28, 19 formula, what most people use. They say Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. But I said, what about Father? Could here, be Buddha. This right here. If I said in the name of the Father and of the Son, Jesus Christ, and of the Holy Ghost, would, would their sins be forgiven? No. So even though I now, so even though I have called out the name of Jesus, it's still not good. You haven't called out the name of Jesus. I have too. The name of the Son, Jesus. Je I said Jesus right there. You see it on the screen? Right there above your shoulder. In the name of Jesus. Now I said Jesus' name, and you're saying that's not good enough. I believe you got to say in the name of Jesus. I said in the name in the name of the Son Jesus Christ, and that's not good enough. Well, you can say in the name of His Son Jesus Christ, yes. So, so, th so this would be all right. I could say in yeah. the name of the Father and of the Son Jesus Christ and of the Holy Ghost. You say in the name of the Son Jesus Christ, and you could. I, I even tell people when I baptize them, I come to you what Jesus said in Matthew twenty eight nineteen to baptize in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. I now baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. So it really depends on what you say. Well, if That's the Bible says it. To, no, the Bible doesn't the say Bible it. The Bible says whatever the you Bible do in word or in deed, if what I say, I've got to do it. If I've if I got to do all in the name of Jesus... When I do baptism, don't you think I gotta? If that's a if that's a deed, aren't I supposed to do it in the name of Jesus? But I'm saying yes, you're supposed to do it in the name of Jesus. But that still, you still haven't proven that means you say in the name of Jesus. Well, you don't. You said it. You agreed it. They did say it. I, I said they may have. I said you can. Or well, you Acts three sixteen. Peter said, "Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give you in the name of Jesus." And I said that was fine because he was telling men by whose authority he did it. But in Acts 5, he didn't say it. So well, then in Acts 17, we find he didn't say anything about baptism. Well, but he didn't. Just they, they, they they because they, they leave baptism out, does that mean Marty, we, Marty, if they leave the name Marty, out, does that mean sermon, we don't need the to The sermon do it? ended when he started talking about the resurrection from the dead. They, they started mocking and they left. Now, if the sermon ended, why would he keep on preaching if everybody's gone? Well, the sermon, the sermon, was, about was, to the, the sermon was about repentance and he didn't say in Jesus' name, and you want to say, well, it must be implied. No, you can't imply something that, that's, that's specifically stated. Paul said, repent. And he didn't say in the name of Jesus. And so you have to, you have to no, assume that's that what it you're is. Saying. He didn't say it. Just because it's not in there doesn't mean they didn't say it. It's like baptism. Those, those exact words, because Mark. baptism ain't in there when they said we've got to repent. Okay, well, uh, we... Uh, uh, okay, we're going to go to the phone lines. Now we have uh, what? How much time would you say? 20, 20 minutes. It was 25, but I think. 20. Okay. Yeah, okay. All right. All right. <clears throat> You're on. What does the Bible say? I mean, a word from the Lord. Sorry. I'm looking at these guys over here. You're on. Word from the Lord. Caller? Praise the Lord. Hello. Praise the Lord. Go ahead with your question. Quickly, please. Yeah. Uh, John 14, chapter John. And the sixth verse, you know, tells us, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. So we know the only way to be saved, you know, is through Christ Jesus. Repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus. Okay. We're, we're not denying that that's, that that's by whose authority. We're saying, do you have to say something? What's your, what's your question? Well, you know, the Holy Ghost, when God give us the Holy Ghost, you know, that leads and guides us to the truth. You know, without the Holy Ghost, you can't see those things. Do you do you have do you have a question? No, I'm just calling. You know, telling you what oh, the word. Okay, is. well, we're 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 trying to take questions here. Oh, we're okay. trying to take questions. All right, thanks for your call. All right, folks, please uh, have your question and let's get right to it because we're running short on time. Uh, you're on the word, of the Lord. I have a question for uh, Mr. Roberts. Okay, go ahead. Um, Mr. Roberts. Uh, 
Colossians 3.17, I know you quoted, um, and whatsoever you do in word or deed, call in the name of Christ, given to God and Father by Him. Do you believe that? Yes, sir. And, and what's the name of your church? Calvary Apostolic Church. Calvary Apostolic Church. Yes, is, is that the name Jesus? Calvary Apostolic Church. No, it doesn't say nothing about the name of Jesus. No. So you're you're in a church that is not done in the name of Jesus. Well, that's, that's just a building. Well, you, you said it's a church. We're not talking about the building. We're talking about the church you're in. Yeah. Well, you no, said the, the church body, is the people. The body is a but this church is a body. Of baptized believers, you can hang any sign you want over the door. It doesn't make it. You can go into a, a recreation center, and it'd be the church. When, when you, you say, go into the body, when you said baptized believers, when you said the church, 